Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is January 28th, um, 2015. And um, we are doing a uh, what I've called a community show, a uh, community meeting um, with some folks who are uh, kind of interested in maybe getting involved with Youth Voices um, and trying to figure that out um, with some veterans. Chris Sloan is here who um, helped start this site, um, has been joking around, um, it's ready for its bar mitzvah. It's about 12 years old. <laughs> and um, so uh, Don Reed is with us. Don's uh, been working on Youth Voices for a couple of years now up in Michigan. And Karen Fessenpower, who is our community manager um, and guru and is great spirit, um, with us um, to introduce this to other people. Um, the rest of you, we want you to introduce yourself, if you don't mind, um, and then we'll get going here. Uh, and just say a little bit about what, you know, why you remind what you're working on um, in general and what you know about Youth Voices so far and what you want to know. Um, but keep it brief and then we'll get going here. Um, youth We've, yeah, let's just start there, unless anybody else wants to interrupt me. No? Good. Ryan, would you mind starting? Sure. Welcome. Hi, my name's Ryan. I'm, What's uh, your last name? <laughs> Ryan Rich. I was a uh, high school English teacher in Ohio for uh, a number of years before, um, before um, becoming a professor of English education at Kennesaw State in Georgia. And we have a, a project up and running with some uh, students and former former graduates. Uh, we're looking at doing some media production and wanting to share it with the community. And we're interested in, in joining the Youth Voices community and becoming good citizens of that of that space that you guys have created. So we're here to learn how to how to get started and how to be good citizens. Very cool. And one of the teachers who will be doing that is Kyle, I think. Welcome, Kyle. What happened? Kyle. There we go. There Sorry, go. I was just unmuting. Uh, yeah, so my name's Kyle Jones. Um, I'm a high school English teacher. This is my eighth year. Um, I'm here with you all right now, really because of Ryan. Um, when I started my EDD program at Kennesaw, um, Ryan's been a big part of pushing me to be more involved in um, opportunities like this. And I've become increasingly more interested in the um, shape of student literacy and what that looks like in real audiences and real opportunities, especially in digital landscapes. So that's a big reason why I'm here and I'm, I'm a part of this. Cool. What grades do you teach, Kyle? Uh, I've always taught pretty much ninth and 10th graders. This year I'm teaching primarily ninth graders. Um, and I've got an elective class with a mixture of upperclassmen. Mm. Just one more question. Are you annualized? Will you have the same kids uh, in the spring that you've had in the fall, or is it a new group? Yes. Yeah, and in all the teaching contexts that I've been in, we've always, I've always taught year-round um, in terms of uh, fall and spring semester, the same kids. Very cool. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, Grafina, welcome. Hi. I'm upset that Paul didn't give me an introduction, but anyway. <laughs> I, you're right. I will. So here, here, Grafina was with us in the Youth Voices Inquiry Project two years ago. Um, it's a project where we have, that year we had 13 students and five teachers, and you were one of the teachers who learned alongside <laughs> of the students. And one of the students was your daughter, so that was, it was exciting to have both of you in the room. And... So, anyway, so we're thinking with Grafina about how to pull Youth Voices into the work she's doing. So, there's my introduction. Do you, what else do you want to say about yourself? Well, um, just that I service a transient population, so I don't have them um, for a very long time because I'm at an alternative learning center where um, they come in for anywhere from three days to maybe 90 days. But so far, with the students that I've had, I've, I was very successful with using Youth Voices with. And also, um, when I was doing credit recovery at Bronx Lab, I had the students work on it, and they were very happy with it. So um, 
at this time, I'm 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 teaching a literacy class for LIU University, and what I'm hoping to do is to get the teachers involved in the voices and have them turn key that out to their students. Rafina, do you know how to mute yourself there, in case there's noise in the background? Um, yes. Okay, just check. So let me do that now. That's cool. Wait, come back anytime, of course. Derek, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I am also here because of Ryan. Um, I am graduated from the undergrad program a couple years ago at Kennesaw. Uh, I teach ninth grade in a suburb of Alpharetta, or a suburb of Atlanta, um, and you know I am trying to figure out how to get more authentic writing into my classroom using digital platforms um, to you know have the authentic audience for for my students. Cool, Bethany. So I um, am looking at ways to use youth voices with a writing project summer camp at a national park. And we've used other blogging platforms. And so we're looking at how it best fits in, especially in the short time span that we're together. Um, and then also my teaching gig is as a middle school tech coach and I'm interested in finding out more about how to present it present youth voices to my teachers to get them on there too. You've got lots of things going on. Did you mention where the summer program happens? I didn't because it's my dissertation and so I was being confidential but I live in Philadelphia. <laughs> so that might be a hint. <laughs> All right, that's very independent of you. Um, <laughs> anyway, so um, I'm not sure where to go here. You know what? I'm what I would love to do. I mean, is I don't know if people are starting new semesters or beginning to or new units, but um, maybe we could just go around and hear what you're about to begin, um, just from a curriculum point of view. Um, does that make some sense? I think so. If not, um, you know, redirect this if you'd like. But um, and we we can talk about youth voices and take questions and so forth as we go. But Chris, can you start that? Like, what are you doing these days? Sure. So um, we just started a semester, and um, I teach a lot of seniors, but uh, ten through twelve. And I teach three sections of AP English language and composition. And then I teach a class called New Media, where we do a lot of, uh, obviously, media production and media um, literacy kinds of things. Um, and so in that class, they're actually carrying over some video projects from the first semester. So I've got uh, students who are who shot a lot of stuff, a lot of interviews, and so they're working on things um, like, uh, it's a small class so I can do it all in a, a sentence, I think. Um, there's a group that's doing, um, uh, should teachers have guns in schools? So in Utah, teachers can actually carry concealed weapons. Uh, some people think that's a bad idea, but, you know, not everybody does. Uh, there's another group doing, um, Air quality in our valley and in the west, it's it's getting pretty bad. Air pollution, with all the fracking, etc. Um, another group is looking at uh, should schools provide more mental health for their uh, for students for more mental health services for the uh, teachers who are carrying guns. Because yeah, right, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> sorry. that connection has been. I couldn't avoid out. it. It has. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Another group is doing, uh, you know, gay marriage is kind of uh, a big thing in Utah, actually. You know, I mean, it's big around the country, but uh, we were one of the first states that kind of uh, a judge overturned a state's laws barring gay marriages. So these uh, one group is looking at the children of gay parents and um, what's what that's like. Um, and finally, a group 
Uh, yeah, that's probably good enough for now. So and then so on Youth Voices, just to is that, is that where the is that where the young man's doing the sorry I don't remember his name is doing the police brutality stuff. Oh, that's a different police? one. Yeah, there's another student who's doing um, the yeah Carlos who's been on this show before. Carlos is um, a lot of the issues around Ferguson, etc., have been uh, police brutality. So he's interviewed our local police and also their, they have an, a youth program, like an explorer program, so he went and uh, did a lot of interviews with them for their response on what they're doing about people's charges about um, being, you know, not uh, racially balanced and brutality kinds of issues. So um, three classes really are on Youth Voices. One is my AP English Language and Composition, so they'll be kind of blogging about the research that they'll be doing. Uh, Inquiry-based research, you know, all kinds of topics. There's almost 80 of them. Uh, the media class that I just talked about, there's there's only 16 of them. So they'll uh, start posting their media, especially when I looked at um, this Atlanta or the people in Georgia, um, mm -hmm. Ryan, when I read about your description. So I think there's some connections there. And then I teach a photography class, and those students also post their photographs. Uh, photos and discuss their work on Youth Voices. So a lot going on. So um, the, the connection you saw and that I was hearing is uh, community-based issues. Mm -hmm. Ryan or, or the others, um, do you guys want to talk about why community-based issues or how you're approaching that? How do kids find their topics? Sure. We're... we're, um, we're we're not as far along in the project as it seems. We're still kind of um, getting it up and running. Um, but the, the way that I'm going to invite the teachers uh, to the conversation is, is well, f first of all, we've um, all, the, all the teachers participating in the study have had class with me in a, in a digital media course where we've explored issues around uh, critical digital media production, um, what it means for kids to identify social issues and offer up some kind of Countertext or counter narrative or some kind of um, some kind of testimony to their experience or their understanding of, of local social issues, and but, but that's going to take shape in different ways in these different classrooms, and so um, it's, it remains to be seen. And I'll let Kyle and, and Derek talk about how they imagine this taking shape in their classrooms and what that conversation would be like. But the initial framing was around helping, leading kids to identify issues that are important to them and to their communities, and then helping them through a process of creating critical, critical digital media and then sharing that with an audience at, um, youth, with youth voices. Uh, yeah, I can jump in a little bit there. Um, just like Ryan said, it's really in the early conceptual phase in terms of what we'll actually do in our classrooms. Um, but uh, teaching mostly ninth grade this year, we're actually working into um, getting into To Kill a Mockingbird in terms of a major piece of literature we're going to be taking a close look at. And clearly a great piece to be able to open up that world of social issues and kind of uncap that a little bit for them, at least in the world of literature. Um, so I, I foresee this project taking shape around that text and, and providing an opportunity to express that through youth voices. Um, but if I'm being completely honest, I have no idea what that looks like yet. Um, I just know that that's the direction that I want to take it. Kyle, you might say um, a little bit about your Zoom project too. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, so one thing that is coming up as well, and I got a chance to pilot this, and I foresee this eventually being my dissertation study for myself too, but um, I grew up um, loving punk rock music and enjoying all of that really through my college years. And uh, during that time, uh, if you've ever heard of uh, zines, the do-it-yourself magazine, you know, slap it together, paste it, staple it, self-distribute, um, there's something that I always really loved about kind of the rebellious nature of that kind of, you know, literacy, really. Um, I didn't really realize that I could use it as a tool in my classroom until a couple, a uh, little over a year ago. Um, so what I do is I invite my students to actually participate in the zine project where they get to decide maybe something thematic or maybe it's just kind of a hodgepodge of creativity, but they get a chance to kind of express um, 
really almost whatever they want to in their own zine. We kind of do it as a class, so it's collaborative in that sense. Um, we go in a, all kinds of potential directions. I've had a class that wanted to unpack stereotypes, and I've had a class that wanted to uh, really kind of go in a bunch of different directions and then put it all together. And So you get a lot of visual literacy, you get a lot of um, opportunities for the kids that love to write poetry get a chance to do that. Um, kids who like writing the narrative and people who want to dig into like you know <laughs> social issues they see in video games, um, they got an opportunity to do that. Um, what I take a lot of pride in is that I don't grade this project. This is something that once they decide we're going to roll with it, we do it once a week, whatever day of the week they choose as a class, and then that day they get to produce and design something that is honestly just literacy for literacy's sake. Um, like I said, I somehow convince them not to do it for a grade. Um, I just try to get them to kind of jump in on wanting to do something uh, that they want to do. There's a wire. Mute Crystal for a second. She'll join us here. Just with Cal, very cool. Have you? I, I, one of the questions you know to ask is: Have do you do you work online with kids at all too, or and how are those two experiences similar and different? Um, so primarily, so the two forms that I've worked with kids online is um, our school does use uh, Google Docs as a primary way to be able to collaborate and function, but obviously that's kind of an in-house system a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll do that a lot. My kids are well connected to me in terms of getting in touch with me through um, uh, the school's Gmail account. It goes straight to my phone so they can reach me and I can communicate with them, which is nice. Um, but beyond that, you know, we collaboratively work on uh, papers that way sometimes where it'll all be through a Google Doc and they'll get my commentary, other students' commentary. It's like anything, you know, you, you, you don't have access to technology as often as you'd like, but again, most of these kids do have phones where they can have the app and connect that way. Um, and then the other way, too, is sometimes I'll invite students to, um, you know, write in my, uh, as a, kind of as an op-ed or whatever in my blog that I do as well. Um, so that's another way that I give them kind of a chance to voice something out on the digital piece. But primarily in terms of working and using tools in the classroom, I mean, it's almost all entirely Google Docs most of the time. Cool. So, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to bring Don in, because Don, when, when he mentioned uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, I was thinking, okay, does Don do... To kill a mockingbird, or is that like? Can you kind of sh set up how you do literature, and you have reading groups and social issues attached to them? Is that a fair introduction? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, we actually just finished reading To Kill a Mockingbird, and we were studying other texts around that issue because we look at ideas and different questions related to to the text. Um, we just read some excerpts actually from Jack and Woodson's Brown Girl Dreaming in the Warmth of Other Suns this week if, uh, by Isabel Wilkerson and we were talking about uh, and we've talked about contemporary issues too. In terms of um, so how I when I'm teaching literature students are engaging in, in groups like Paul mentioned but then I also try to tie in um, current issues and conversations, community-based conversations. Um, Chris and I work also, and, and others I know work with um, KQED out of California and we sometimes are engaged in some do now conversations where there's conversations about um, issues that are relevant to the world, of course. I try to tie that into literature too. But in terms of what we, we haven't posted a lot about To Kill a Mockingbird, but today students were starting to formulate more ideas of how do all these things come together if we ask the question of how do we see um, these issues relevant to our lives today. And a lot of them were, compl or were contemplating some very good, good, good questions based on those other texts that we pulled in. And um, we looked, and I noticed somebody in the, in the, um, chat was talking about some of Jacqueline Woodson's other pieces in reference to Tupac. We're going to re read a Tupac song and um, well and listen to it. We listened to um, Strange Fruit by Billie Holiday and tie in a lot of different texts related to what, how is culture influencing us today and, or, and how is it influencing and at play in, in the literature. 
So I also teach, I know lots of people mentioned ninth grade. I also teach ninth grade. I have several ninth grade sections. Um, in terms of youth voices, they have recently been posting a lot about more independent reading, and but also they're moving towards developing and honing a lot more of their own inquiry questions, and that's something I'm trying to pull out of To Kill a Mockingbird as well. In terms of curriculum, because Paul asked us earlier, what are we going to be looking at? Um, I imagine some other ninth grade teachers also read Romeo and Juliet, so that's one of the texts we'll be looking at. So I'm trying to formulate some questions to guide them that will also tie in the community. <coughs> elements. So, that's what I'm up to. Um, and then I'm also looking for for anyone that's interested, my American Lit class is reading The Crucible and we're going to be looking at social issues in, in terms of modern day witch hunts and doing some writing. So, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> So the big game here is, and if other people have ideas, one of the ways that we can find ways to get our kids connected is like we're doing right now, and like you just did. Like, is anybody else doing the crucible? Can you imagine doing the crucible? Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. I, having said that, you know, um, there, the Harvest is a, a school here in New York City, uh, a uh, former colleague of mine, um, Kieran Chuhardi, um, teaches there, and a lot of her students um, post about their independent reading there too. And and um, yeah, but it, it 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 often feels like uh, a missed op opportunity that I don't want to ever give up on um, to the, to have kids connect around those books. So yeah. I'm not sure how to do it, but um, I, I would love for there to be more discussion on those posts, um, so that may, maybe if you if you read a book, you you should post your own thing, but you should also look to see if somebody else has posted about it. But I don't know. So if anybody else has ideas about how to make those connections happen more, let me know. But what you just did is great. Is a, is a start. Um, Good. So others are okay. Sorry, things going on here. So, so why why wouldn't you do like a book review? Um, and then have you know the students respond to somebody else's book review and see if they if they you know have the same meaning or feel the same way about the book. Yeah. Or put them like as a critic. Because what we're working on um, at my school is commentary and criticism and looking at how to um, write that, you know, looking at the writing structures of criticism and commentary. Um, what I'm doing with them is we're looking at Bengali poet Tagari We've um, studied some of um, Gandhi's work, and then I'm going to tie it into um, Martin Luther King during Black History Month, and looking and looking at this, you know, bigger <coughs> social issue of freedom and what freedom actually means to these different individuals, and how their train of thought connected and influenced one another. Mm -hmm. Um. Hello, Crystal. Yeah, please introduce yes. yourself. Mr. Okay, Go hello. Ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just. This is a, this is a new thing for me. Uh, yeah, my, yeah. Name is, Fine. my name is Crystal Ringer. I um, teach at uh, MS324. I'm a sixth, seventh, and eighth grader uh, special ed teacher. And this Friday, we're going to start a civil rights unit, where we're going to the first movie we're going to go see. We're going to see Selma. And we're going to read. Um, You're taking the kids to see it, or how? We're taking how the kids to see Selma. We're going to see the 10:45 show at 80. I think it's 84th Street. Yeah, 84th Street. And we're going to tie the thinking as far as what happened during the civil rights movement, and how do you connect from the past, present, and the future? Because I teach up at Washington Heights, and not to say, but a lot of our, a lot of my children have a big disconnect because their parents feel that the civil rights movement had nothing to do with them. So a lot of the kids believe that also. So 
um, I just created this PowerPoint presentation so to show them how uh, the civil rights movement connect to uh, their uh, minority background because a lot of them don't believe that just because they were they didn't they weren't here their parents weren't here in the 60s or during the civil rights movement it has nothing to do with them. Are your kids largely Dominican or what are your kids? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I want to say mm -hmm. that um, uh, my school is 95 percent Dominic, uh, Hispanic, uh, two percent African American, and uh, the rest are, yeah, that's about it. Okay. So there, uh, j j and just to identify that on Youth Voices, you'll find you, students do post there, but also teachers create missions there, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a mission that uh, we started to build and brought together a lot of materials so far um, around Selma, and it'd be great to see if uh, your kids get in there and look at some of those articles. For the for the again with the idea that they would then um, be able to connect with other people around well, that. Well, we but well, certainly, they could write reviews and and of the movie and think about their response to the movie. There's there's quite a few really interesting ones up already about that. Which Go is ahead. perfect. Yeah. Which is beautiful because what we did was when we did um I had taken the kids when I brought the three children to um, Youth Voices and introduced them to them. Um, Chris was so nice to introduce us to uh, make a web page for us, and I showed the kids of how to post. So we're going to start. That's one of the um, the uh, objectives for the children to learn how to post during the civil rights uh, movement unit. All right, so Karen's listening. Um, I, I think she's in the uh, chat room now. But um, and so getting support on that. If you need uh, to get your kids logged in and post and so forth, we can do. Okay. Um, Thank you. So yeah, just uh, but yeah, we'll follow up. Um, you know, I, I, this feels a bit like a mess, but that's okay. Let's keep it going <laughs> as yeah. a mess. But but so but for those of you who are new to Youth Voices, what immediate questions do you have that we could begin to answer, and maybe that'll help structure? If you could, if we could structure it around your questions, that would be useful, I think. Or your thoughts about using the site? Because that's sorry. I'll throw, I'll throw a question out, um, mm -hmm. maybe on behalf of Kyle and Eric. Um, what, in term, what do the veterans recommend for getting students started? And so, I guess what we want to avoid is just having the see, having the the students see this as a repository, um, where they just put their projects and wait for feedback. We really want to get them involved early, even before they create their projects, to become, like I said, good citizens of the of the space. So maybe like some, some tips from veterans about how to get students um, apprenticed to to youth voices and and how to do that. Yeah, one thing that I would say <clears throat> is, um, I mean, it's one thing that you, is really uh, motivational. It really does a lot for my students is when they get comments on some of their work. Um, and so what I'll do a lot of times is for every post I have my students do, I'll have them write at least two comments on someone else's. And so <clears throat> we'll look at a school's page and uh, I'll tell my kids, you know, you, the tendency might be to go to the first one on the top left. And so every, you know, Andy gets all the comments and uh, Zebediah gets none because we don't read that far down, right? So what I'll do is I'll say, you know, if your first name is Andy, go to that schools page. So if you go to Youth Voices, there's a schools tab and, you know, there's schools listed. And um, especially if I know teachers are currently putting stuff on there, like Dawn's class, for example, I'll say, okay, if your name's Andy, start with the A's and start looking through those posts and see which ones interest you. When you find one, comment on it. Uh, if your name is Mary, you know, start with the M's. So at least spreading it around that way is what I try to do when I'm trying to connect with schools. And generally they can find a lot of connections with each other, but I think an, an easy entry point is to start with comments rather than starting as posts because um, you're right. I mean, um, 
I've seen that before, Ryan, where my students will post a bunch of things and then nothing happens. So um, th I think if we start with conversations on other people's works, then um, more interesting things happen. I would uh, um, I would agree. Um, I would have them look up the things that are of interest to them. What are they passionate about? You know, sports, music, um, astrology, <laughs> anything, it, and everything is on youth voices. And then actually read what you know the actual student has said or posted, and and comment to that. And you, they would be surprised. They can actually start a dialogue. They might find people that think the same as them. They might find people that are different. They might disagree, agree. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as it's done in a respectful mm -hmm. way, it'll work out. And they'll actually look at youth voices as something of interest to them that really shares a lot of their feelings and what they believe in. I agree with what's been said so far as well. I would also add that I spend some time with students exploring some of the, um, there's a mission out there about um, self and world questions, and so I get students focusing on how do I develop questions so that they can see the youth voices as conversational around questions and inquiry and exploration. And we spend some time developing our own profiles, and, put our, and, they, and students put their questions out there. And then we spend a lot of time talking also about digital citizenship, part of that community as well. Yeah, and that mission, by the way, is youthvoices.net slash questions that you mentioned. Um, but Ryan, Derek, and 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 Carl, is have have you guys talked about how you get to, like, how do you get kids to find that community issue that is meaningful to them? Is it do you do you have a protocol an idea of that about that yourselves? Or? We, um, Derek, good idea. At at um. So far, in my I teach two levels of ninth grade. Um, we do a lot of narrative writing, and through narrative writing, we've done like the this I believe, um, and some of some of those kinds of assignments that start kind of focusing them in on the idea of you know it, or what they believe in. Um, with the community issues, we haven't talked a whole whole lot about that yet. Um, we're going to be doing that with our upcoming unit on Malala and um, Henrietta Lacks. Do you how this? I believe. Do you how much? What do you do with that? Do you, you're you're right next to the queen of this. I believe. But <laughs> sorry, Don does a lot of work with that too, or you at least you did in the past. And and if you and if you search for for missions around, um, you'll find missions there. So anyway. That might be a way to start too. By the way, oh, I did this great project. Uh, this I believe, and there's this I believe mission on your voices. I could put this up, and then you know, one of the things worth mentioning is that on a mission there are the student work goes on the left side in a column, so it, it becomes mentor text for other students, for example. So, but my first question there was, how develop are those projects, how, what did you do with them? Some people actually have kids record them. We, uh, we, did, we did two things. We had them write them and then read them in, a, um, in class, but we also had them write or create a video portion of this, I believe. Um, so they did a multimodal project with that, um, with a this, I believe, projects as well. And does that exist somewhere online or...? Um, I don't know if it's, I, I don't think it's up on like a YouTube channel or anything like that right now. Mm -hmm. It can be, but not, um, I think I have the, I think I have all the product files. Cool. So you can think about how, whether or not that fits in, but just to say one of the, one of the principles that, uh, there's like all these assumptions we make on Youth Voices at some point, but one of the, th one of our, goals, hopes, is that students are publishing themselves. Um, so that's an important part of this, um, that, you know, it doesn't go through the teacher first. I mean, obviously, I mean, and um, 
Carol, your mention of of uh, docs and so forth, a lot of us use that too. So there is a lot of revision and process and so forth. But at some point, you want to say, okay, you know, put that up as a discussion. Um, so that that kind of um, agency is important, I think, in our community as well. Don, you un unplugged there, but did you want to say something more? Oh, I, I was th just thinking exactly what you were about, the authenticity piece, and that's something that I, I feel like I'm constantly trying to do with youth voices is, how, is encourage students to publish on their own when it's not required of them. So. Hmm. You know, somebody, somebody who's marking Regents exams, which is our state exam tonight and wanted to join us, did send a question along, which is, um, how can we get kids to start using youth voices outside of just responding to assignments? Um, and, you know, I don't know, but that's that's really what you just said there too, right? So, I mean, and the thing is, as, as I hear everybody's assignments, they're, they're wonderful and brilliant and interesting, but, <laughs> yeah, what what we as a community keep pushing toward is is, is getting getting it to come from the students. Um, can I, Bethany? Can, can I invite you back? Do you have any thoughts, ideas, as as you're listening here, or questions? I was typing a question just then. Um, I oh, was good. wondering if anyone's tried having their students create a mission. They might not have the functionality to do that, though. They do. Any any member can create a mission. Yeah. Oh, okay. Have any of you had success with that? No. <laughs> There's no reason why not. I have done it. Uh, I have done it in workshops, um, and kids have started missions. Um, but yeah, that that would certainly be a a, a great idea to, to make that happen more. Um, but the functionality is there. I don't even know if people know the functionality is there. Um, and let me speak a little more. I mean, get, just getting teachers to start <laughs> producing missions is a big deal um, because it, it, it requires, and other people can speak to this, but it requires a shift of focus from I'm creating this assignment for my class and my students to I'm creating this so that other people, you know, Don's ninth graders and and Paul's sixth graders maybe can kind of get into this too and, and work with it. So that when Crystal takes her kids to Selma, there's the Selma um, mission there already, right? Um, for for her to to mess around on, um, and so and, and then it's so there's that, and then it's student directed. Right, so that um, it's not putting curriculum up; it's putting up um, something that really tries to engage young people uh, in some way. So, I don't think it's a difficult pivot, but it's it, it is a it is something to think about as we and we encourage you to to build as many missions as you'd like. You know, we'll figure it out. But yeah, that was a great question. <laughs> Sorry, we don't have a better answer yet. <laughs> Your kids can make them. What, Bethany, what would you imagine kids make? I'm not sure. I was just thinking that, that I, as you were talking about encouraging students to um, encouraging students to post even when it's not their not for a grade, um, I was thinking that if they created it, I wonder if their investment would be even greater. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's worth seeing. That's what that was more what I was thinking was that I would be interested to see how they responded to that. Cool. I had another question actually, which was yeah. how the veterans structure writing time um, huh. so that I can That's... steal ideas. Say more. What do you mean? I don't quite understand. Um, when maybe somebody else does, but yeah. Uh, Really just, just, you know, speaking to that and engaging as good citizens of the platform, um, I think that all the teachers who are veterans probably have ways that they introduce students to the platform, ways that they structure the time when students are writing on the platform, and I'd love to hear more about um, 
how that looks for different people. Well, I'll add and then and wait for other people to jump in. Hey, Chris, are you still there, Chris? Yes, I'm. Um, um, I think oh, I just Crystal, you are, yeah. something. Yes, I am. No, no, I meant I meant Chris Sloan, but that's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so one of the things one of the things to guard against, I think, is having everything go to four or five drafts and make it really, really wonderful before it goes up on Youth Voices. Um, to be satisfied with, okay, this isn't quite done yet, but uh, it's good enough to get response, right? Um, is is one of the things to think about, and then and then you know eventually the the more excellent piece evolves. I think, Don, have you struggled with that at all, or or thought about that? I I think that's your question, right, Bethany? You're close. Um. Close. I actually, it reminds me of so this weekend at Educon when you said I always have people um, do four comments before they, mm -hmm. or I ask students to do four comments before they put up any put up their own post. It made me think. Oh, there are all sorts of ways of indoctrinating students into the culture of youth voices that I don't know yet, and so that's what I was interested in. I'm going to keep coming a little bit. Look, look, can I just say also that in the commenting, um, I have a whole progression in mind too. Like eventually, and I wish I could get there, but more often I work with middle school students, but eventually I would love kids to start not arguments necessarily, but let's call them arguments, you know, in a very generic way, that they're starting to do research of, of their own and their, that research ends up not only in their discussion posts but also in their comments. So that they say, you know, that was a really important point you're making, point you're making but I read this article and I was thinking this and, you know, and here's a quote from that article. So that's a progression that I would love to see the comments going toward. Um, so that's one thing to think about. Um. Well, as I said before, I have a real transient population, so one of the things that I wanted them to work on was the, was the mission of the Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. and where they had to um, sign up with Genius and annotate a, one out of two poems. And I thought that really worked out well as far as them to begin their writing process. And then as they continued on with the mission, they had to create their own poetry. And I also felt that that worked out well because it just gave them, you know, an entry point for them to start writing and start researching and start thinking about different things that they could use to comment on your voices. And then also, once they so, can I check in? So, so one of the things you're saying there is that they, they could drop off after, like, they don't have to do the whole mission. There are pieces of that mission they could do if they're only there three or four days, or yeah. or they could go deep if mm -hmm. they're there longer. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. But you know, the students that I had, they were there a little bit longer, so they were able to go and start doing the research and dwelling more deeper, which you know and which created more writing. By the way, Bethany, um, the first poem you read this weekend was written by Grafina. But, <laughs> that you loved that poem. <laughs> but she wanted to respond to a student, so you didn't get a response. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I started okay. shouting about how great it was, and oh my gosh, I can't believe how good this is, and then um, got told that was a teacher, and I said, nope. <laughs> uh I really wanted. loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Crystal, did you want to say something? Yes. We're also, to add in with the writing project, um, we're going to also, my kids are in project. is on top of using writing about youth voices in summer. They're each going to research one important person that had an um, uh, important part uh, as far as the um, civil rights movement, and they're all going to create a nonfiction picture book. Um, because, like I said once again, a lot of them believe that they don't have 
no, I, I wouldn't say they just they from their past. They just don't believe a lot of them have anything to do with the civil rights movement. So hopefully, this is my end game: is that they're going to respond on to youth voices and have a piece put on it, and they also are going to have a nonfiction picture book that they're going to research and they have to develop. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have a, a certain amount of time that each time is allocated for each day for them to go into the computer. We're going to go take them to the user computer, the library, and a couple of things because a lot of the kids do not do a lot of research in my in my particular class. So, so Crystal, start, Crystal yeah. let me let me push back for a second and just okay. ask what what would the non I mean all of us do some things on paper and some things online. Uh -huh. But what would the nonfiction picture book look like online? Online, okay. Well, that's a good question. So what's going to happen is is that they're going to use um, since we just started using Google Docs and I've gotten very good at it. We're going to use um, the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, mm -hmm. and they, each one is going to create a PowerPoint presentation, and they're going to actually use the information because I give everybody they have nine slides, and they have to answer each question. And on top of that, they have to uh, research that particular person. For example, one of the students okay. are going to do Robert Aben Abernathy, and he has so to find. So that's the that's the Google slides you're using. The, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Sorry. Go ahead, Ab Abernathy. Yeah, they're going to use Abernathy. Um, one of the children are going to use Abernathy, and they're going to find out everything that they could possibly uh, find out, research about it, but they also have to answer these nine particular specific questions for the research project. You know, because okay. a lot of people understand who Martin Luther King is, but you remember Martin, I tried to explain to him Martin Luther King didn't do it by himself. He needed a sister. He had a sister. Okay, so immediately let me say, do you... Do you have it's really easy to get the embed code, uh -huh. right, and to put that on Youth Voices as long as they've made it a public document. Yes. Right. So they can put that up in a discussion, and then that exists right there. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. so there's a discussion. The more difficult thing I want to ask you to do is think about like, do you have all that assignment written down somewhere? Yes. So could you think about making a mission around that so we could kind of see what that looks like? Yeah. Sure. Cool. I could. Okay. Yeah. We can start. Why not? <laughs> okay. Other thoughts, yeah, questions. Um, you know, we've got a good ten minutes left. We want to. We could keep talking ourselves, but let's hear from new folks your questions, ideas. One one thing that. I have to. Um, Is this Derek? Yeah, go ahead, Derek. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to be careful. Yeah. Um, one thing I have to deal with is kind of the the worry from administration on open, you know, kind of open source stuff, or not open source, but open open environments like this. Um, I, you know, we do some online annotating, and Genius is blocked by my school district, but also, you know, they worry about the, the type of content that's on Genius. Has anyone ran into that kind of issue and, like, how they, you know, how to get around something like that or how to even pitch it to administration that would be, um, you know, successful, I guess? Um, I've had some uh, experience with that. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I was gone for a little bit. My daughter came. I had to talk to her for a second. Um, but um, I, I say that like my students are already out doing all kinds of stuff uh, on social media, and they're documenting their social selves really well. And so I say Youth Voices is an opportunity for them to document their uh, academic and intellectual side. And so... Um, Sorry, Chris. For some reason, Chris's image wasn't showing up, and I just knocked him out. Chris, come back. <laughs> well, oh, it's just muted. There you go. There you go. Oh. His image isn't showing. I don't know what's okay. going on here tonight. But go uh, ahead. I don't know. Sorry, we can hear you though. Yeah. Did you catch most of that, or? 
Yeah, you you talked about people documenting themselves. Um, yeah, the digital footprint. Yep. And and so um, what they do is they're documenting their research, and um, so like they don't get. I mean, it's hard to get in trouble when you're writing about inquiry and things that you're researching. Um, when you start to write about social stuff, um, you know, I don't know. Anyway, when I have them do inquiry writing, that never comes up because I tell my administrators they're purposely um, crafting or creating their, their digital presence, and, and I'm helping them do that in positive and proactive ways. Administrators, I think, can buy into that. Awesome. Thank you. So, Derek, yeah. what, what, what does the conversation look like with your administrators, though? Do you think? I mean, first of all, do you know if Youth Voices is blocked yet? <laughs> um, I got on. I was I was at school today and had some time during planning. And as a teacher, I could get on there. Um, but I can get on um, Genius as well as a teacher. So okay. it was one of those where I hadn't had one of my students try yet. Um, it's kind of like Twitter. I can get on Twitter, but my students can't get on Twitter. Um, right. So I don't know if it. I don't. I would imagine it would be You'll blocked. Yeah, and I'll have a. You know, once I start getting into it more, I'll have a student test it out first um, mm -hmm. before we do that. Uh, but, you know, the, the concern whenever I was starting to use um, even something like Twitter was that anyone could come in and comment on it and maybe it, it was the fear factor that if someone come in and commented something, we have no control over, you know, over that, that fear um, or over that, over that person. I can't, you know, delete them out of, of the... Um, you know, out of, out of the Twitter space, and it could be something harmful, and, you know, again, it, it, it was that, that fear aspect. Well, and if I, if I could speak a little bit to that, and Derek, feel free to offer um, some further contextualization about your individual school, but um, Georgia is a right-to-work state. There's no union protection for teachers, and um, my early career teachers worked within, a, within either a real or imagined culture of fear. Um, for their jobs, and so they often err on the side of caution when it comes to these things. Um, Derek may be an exception because I think he has an awesome working relationship with his with his faculty, and he was Derek. You're st you're teaching in the same place you student taught, correct? Yeah. So he's been there a while and, and made some great inroads, but um, there's still there's still that fear. I mean, it's um it's. In some buildings, it's kind of imagined. It's kind of institutionalized fear, and not, in some buildings, it's real. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I heard you say was like to be able to have some control over who's commenting and that kind of thing. And I mean, Paul can speak to this, I'm sure. But uh, as a user, I like the fact that first of all, we aren't going to get a lot of trolling because um, it's a place that's, you know, it's there's a lot of teachers there. And we can, um, you know, you have administrator privileges to delete comments on the site. I would say responsibilities <laughs> beyond right. privileges, right? So yeah, I mean, that it, it feels really important, and and I don't know if your administrators or administrators will understand this, so that's that's the part you have to kind of figure out, but. Part of part of our impetus in in, in 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 keeping youth voices alive is that I I don't like you know at least with my middle schoolers going on a site that I can't administer and by administer I mean you know being able to go in and say you know they started the post with uh, you know expletive expletive and then they wrote a really good paragraph after that and I can go in and take that first line out and say you know this is cool as opposed to like having to block it totally or you know, or not address it at all. So that that those are the kinds of tools that um, that we have. And um, as an administ as a teacher on the site, we kind of we kind of depend on each other to be lots and lots of eyes on the site, making sure everything is safe, but safe so that kids can take risks, right? So that that's that's kind of the goal. And I don't know how you say that to different administrators, but just to know that, you know, over a decade of, of, of working this way, it's worked. Um, 
and and I feel like it's safer because it is open, right? Because it is open because everybody can see everything all the time, um, and everybody has access to everything. We we keep it we keep it uh, safe for for everybody. Any other thoughts on on that? Yeah, yeah. my um, oh, Crystal, you go. Yeah, ahead. my administrator has actually have we have been to use voices together. So when it came down to us using Youth Voices, um, the site, she had no problem because she was very comfortable with the fact that how Youth Voices, um, they guide the kids and how safe, it, how, how safe the site was. So, and she had no problem with us using it. So I don't know, maybe they should come with you in one of the uh, Youth Voices uh, uh, weekends. That's a so nice idea. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. So Ryan, Ryan, it might maybe maybe you could do an administrator's <laughs> workshop or something. Yeah, That's an I idea. Think so. yeah. I, no, I think in our in our service area for our writing project, I think this will be an easier sell. Um, and our you know our director Jen Dale could easily pick up the phone and and you know deal with this. But where where our writing project hasn't been present and where people don't know about N NWP, I think it's going to be a harder sell. Mm -hmm. Karen, do you want to say something? Um, yeah, I was just, you know, I've, I've had this conversation with a lot of administrators, and I think one way to handle it is by talking about that students are on the Internet with or without us. And it's, you know, I feel like it's really a responsibility of us as educators to guide students and you know, go through different stages depending where they are of, of supervising and guiding and mentoring. And I think that's something that a lot of administrators respond well to. But it's a hard conversation, and it, you know, it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Karen, do you have any, any other thoughts? I mean, um, we're getting kind of close to the end. I, I will kick it off. I hope I don't steal your thing. But um, Karen just created a page called uh, youthvoices.net slash help um, where we're trying to collect together some ideas and um, place and from, from the past and, and update it. Um, Karen's doing it. Um, and there's, there's also a place, and I want to encourage everybody to jump in here, um, there's a new channel, so we want teachers. If you could, and, and if teachers could let us let each other know what's um, what you're doing in your classroom. Um, I think that's one way to think about it, or anything that comes to mind. Also, so you just go in, create a discussion um, on Youth Voices, just like a student would uh, by clicking "Create a Discussion" top left corner, and then. When you when you post it, you want to choose teachers teaching teachers, because that's a channel where um, where we've kind of been meeting each other. There was a, a teacher in Oakland, Oakland High School, I think, um, who just posted there recently about some research projects that she's starting. She couldn't join us tonight, but we can then kind of connect with her that way. Where is that, Paul? Well, um, if you go to channels and you can find it. Uh, Find the channel under Teachers Teaching Teachers. Channels is a tab at the top. And then you scroll down, you'll find it. I think they're alphabetical. So we're keeping we're keeping those off the front page because we do want this to be, you know, a, a student space. But we also felt the need for some dialogue back and forth. Um, when you're ready to set up a class, um, Karen needs, or you can send it to me or to Karen, needs, uh, you know, email addresses for each kid, a username for each kid, and a password for each kid. Um, I think that's right. Um, Karen, do you have anything to add? No. <laughs> all of that. I was going to talk Karen? about the teacher channel, so that, I'm uh, glad I you brought I that up. I dropped you, sorry. So what... <laughs> That's okay. Am I back or not? You're back. You're here. Okay. Um, so I did put a link for the teacher channel, and I'll um, I'll give that a better shortcut when we get done here. Um, but that's a, that's new. Some of you were on a show where we talked about setting that up, so definitely go there. And one of the things that's there 
is a spreadsheet that um, it's Louise, I believe, um, mm -hmm. set up how she kind of keeps track of what students are doing in Youth Voice is an administrative tool that might be useful for people to look at. Um, and then that help page also has ways to get started. And I would just really um, echo what Paul said before about just jump, jump in and have your kids do something. And it doesn't, it's really not a kind of finished, polished posting place necessarily. There's a lot of opportunities to jump in and comment or to write things that are sort of still being formed. And I think that's the best way to get engaged in it and get going on it. Um, and then just again, if anybody needs any um, help with setting up accounts or setting up school pages or anything at all, just email me anytime and I'll stick my email in the chat. So, go ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, last, last thought, so go ahead. Well, no, no, I'm just logistically caring out and the teachers that I'm going to bring on board, I'll try to help facilitate that and you have to kind of consolidate that for you. Thanks. Awesome. Ryan, do you have any last thoughts, though, as we finish here? We'll go across the board and hear final thoughts. No, I'm looking forward to it. I think um, I need to, like, so our, our study is still kind of gaining momentum, and so I'm looking forward to getting our folks together and maybe sitting down together and having a similar hangout just with them where we play around with youth voices and do some exploring. Um, I think we're still we're still getting our feet wet and trying to understand the scope of it and all the moving parts. So looking forward to getting into it and, and figuring out with the teachers. Grafina, any last thoughts tonight? Um, definitely lots and lots of different thoughts. But um, I'm really looking forward to um, having future students come on Youth Voices and, and turn key the information to their students. Cool. Sorry, Derek, last thoughts? I am totally thoughts? excited about um, Youth Voices. I, I was looking at it today and getting a little more inundated with it and I got so excited about it I pulled my neighbor teacher over into it and showed it to her about some of the stuff we could do just within the school and, and neighboring school. So, uh, you know, I am stoked about, about using it and, and really getting into it. Cool. Welcome. Nice to have you. You're done. Good conversation. Thank you for the um, new channel for teachers, too. And um, I'm excited to connect to more with more people. And one thing I just want to also just mention is I know my students are also excited about the Youth Voices Live. They were reminding me today that I need to bring okay. up the fact that we need to talk about that. Yeah. And you suggested something to, to uh, a TED Talk to focus it around, right? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll look at you. Yeah. Can you can you put, that was an email to me, can you put that up as a um, as a post on the te Teacher Teen Teacher? Yeah. And can I, um, I, I, I hate to say this, but because it's a very incomplete page, you'll see very fast. But what I've started to do, and Karen, is is to address the um, kids finding each other who are reading the same book, is to try to put a tag, the title of the book, just you know, plain title of the book with spaces and everything, in as a tag. And then um, there's a page called youthvoices.net slash books where all of those can, can exist. And if we can start collecting that way, the, there's a way to, to, to have people connect. Crystal, last thoughts as you go. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you. This is really wonderful. This is my first time using Hangout. So this is interesting for me. And my kids are going to, when we start after, I guess after Friday, Monday, we're going to start posting out their thoughts about the uh, movie. Um, we're just getting excited to get started. That'll be and fun. Thanks once again. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, um, lots of nice connections. Like Crystal, I'm taking students to a movie tomorrow um, that's about the Black Panthers. So you know, like a different kind of spin on '60s America. Okay. And uh, you know, so they'll be posting some things next week about that, and then. Um, you know, Derek, it sounds like some of the stuff you're doing, um, my students can connect with also. 
and they already do with Don's. I think the key, though, is um, you know making those connections and and trying to foster those relationships because when the kids actually you know have conversations mm -hmm. and connect with one another is when it really takes off. And and the converse is always true. Is also true if they don't get any feedback from anyone, it can be kind of uh, you know it's not as effective as it could be. Bethany, since you your name starts with the B, you get last word tonight. <laughs> Which is funny because on my screen I'm on the other side, so I, know, I was like, I know. <laughs> um, so I one thing I've noticed since. Um, since Educon is that I keep telling every single teacher I know about youth voices, so it's interesting how the more I find out, the more I want to uh, get other people on there. So, cool. Thank you for this tonight. All right. Thank you all. Um, we're here every Wednesday. Next uh, week we're going to be talking about voice thread. Uh, I think uh, Steve Muth might be with us, but certainly some uh, some other people who are using voice thread. Um, and so we're here every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we are a ch channel of the World Bridges Network at edtechtalk.com. Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo started that many years ago at this point. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay.